What do you need to learn or hear from your inner child? What do you need to heal from your inner child? I did some inner child work during my power mornings. And there was one instance I remember as a child. And I think this is what actually triggered a lot of my um, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, and behaviors that continued um, from childhood through teenage years, early adulthood. And some things may have happened when I was younger as well, too. I'm still researching, you know, trying to delve deeper into um, learning more about my inner child. But the one instance that I do remember, y'all, was when I was in elementary school. And I grew up in a predominantly white neighborhood. Um, my family wasn't wealthy, wasn't rich by any means. Actually, we were poor. We were on welfare, um, went to the food bank. Um, I didn't have nice new clothes, <laughs> anything like that. Um, I had very thick glasses growing up. I used to get made fun of all the time when I was younger because of my glasses and what I looked like. And I remember feeling different than other people, less than. There was one instance where I was outside and I was looking through the fence in the back of my yard and there were these cheerleaders around my age at that time. They had to be in like grade school and they were all little white girls. And I remember looking out at those girls they looked so clean and crisp and pure. They weren't dirty. Their hair was perfect. Their outfits were so perfect. Their skin looked so perfect. They didn't have any scars on their skin. Um, anything like that. They looked, looked so perfect and happy. Their shoes were nice and clean. And their socks were. And then I remember looking down at myself. I had scars on my legs because I was a little tomboy. My hair was nappy looking. It wasn't neatly organized over my head. I had some old, dirty, dingy clothes on. And mind you, this is my perspective looking back and thinking about that moment. So if you can picture a picture, one side is light and bright. The other side is gray and dark and dim. I was on the gray, dark and dim side and those little young white girls were on the bright, happy, whole side and there was an instance when you know i was in elementary school i remember and I, you know i had all like little white friends because I, like i said i was the only black girl and i remember my one white friend i can't remember her name but i had to be in like elementary school and i remember her just talking and laughing and like twirling her hair and flipping her head from one side to side with her hair and everything and i seen that I said, oh, oh, I got long hair. I um, proceeded to take out my ponytail and do the same thing. I was moving my head from side to side, you know, twirling my hair around and everything like that. I was just feeling too cute, you know, because I felt my hair falling down my back. And I, I just knew it looked exactly like my white friends. And I ended up having to go to the bathroom, raised my hand, went out to the bathroom and I walked past the mirror and I caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror. I turned my head, y'all, and I instantly felt this rush of shame, embarrassment. I just felt so ugly and stupid. Any negative emotion that you can feel or think of as a kid, and I'm standing there in that mirror, in that bathroom by myself, feeling so ashamed and uh, embarrassed and ugly and I'm there in that moment by myself mind you I'm in elementary school and I have to process this feeling by myself because there was no one there but me I looked at myself my hair was all over my fucking head because I didn't have white girl hair that would just flow and fall into place when I shake my head no I had black kinky thick hair it might have been long it was definitely long it was down my back but <laughs> It wasn't just falling all nicely. This is back before you got relaxers and stuff like that. You got the hot comb. And if you sweat, you sweat it out that nice straight hair. <laughs> so I, I just remember that moment, y'all. And I, I believe that was a turning point in my life. That was one of the pivotal moments in my, my life that created such... I, I would even go as far as saying... I can't even... No, I'm not even going to say self-hatred. Because I didn't hate myself. But 
that began the process of that began the starting point of low self-esteem. It, it could have happened before then, but that point, that time, that period in time was so memorable to me. Um, so not too long ago in a meditation, and it was so crazy because I remember that that came up in my mind again. So during a meditation, I thought to myself, what would I have liked in that moment? What would I have needed in that moment? So during my meditation, my meditation, I went back to that moment in time to Wendy, little Wendy that you see right here in the mirror, or excuse me, the little Wendy that you see right here in this picture. I went back to that time, that very moment when Wendy looked in the mirror and seen herself in that rush of shame and embarrassment just spread all over her whole body. And I stood there behind myself and I looked at myself and I was like, you are beautiful. It is okay. Anything that I thought I would have needed in that moment, I gave to myself. Y'all don't know how transfer, transformational that was for me because literally I helped to heal a part of my inner child. That was something that I never addressed, never touched on, never shared with anyone. You know what I mean? Never worked through. So imagine how much stuff that happened to you or things that you may have thought about you know, or did you know that happened to you when you were younger that triggered you or moments that you remember so vividly that affected you, you know, imagine going back to yourself and telling yourself it's okay. Like you're, you're all right. And giving yourself every single thing that you would have needed in that moment to get through that time period successfully. So from that point, it led me to incorporating my younger self in my meditations. I went as far as incorporating my younger self, my early 20 year old self, and then my present day self and also my future self. So when I'm sitting in my serenity room and I'm meditating and I'm thinking about things, guess who's right there with me? Little Wendy, little Wendy. And you know, it's so crazy y'all. I look at little Wendy as little Ava. I have a five year old daughter and I look at her and I, I think, oh my God, I'm going to give her every single thing that little Wendy would have wanted that love that attention, the guidance, um, everything that I felt that I was lacking or that I would have wanted. So, so my thought process behind all of this is being good, doing the right thing, cherishing my daughter because I was that young girl at one point in time. I was impressionable. I was vulnerable. I needed to hear things and to be taught things that I wasn't at that young age. No, you know what I mean? And I, I had a mentally ill mom. Um, my father, who, who knows about him, but also my, um, I grew up with my aunt and you think about it and y'all think about this seriously as adults with kids or without kids, you go through stuff, right? You go through your own problems and you, sometimes you're not fully present and, and aware of what's going on with your children because you're focusing on your own, own problems, your own things. That's one of the things that I realized when I was younger and I had my older daughter, um, I was young, having a child, as a child, and I was growing up and maturing, and I, I wasn't able to to be there fully for her, like she probably would have needed. And again, I'm not knocking myself, I'm not making myself bad, but it's the reality. You think about it, it's the reality, and that's what happens. Even now, present day, as an adult, I have things that I go through um, in my life, and I have a five-year-old child, but where I'm at now mentally is a lot farther along and more developed and self-aware and um, more controlled and in a better place in my life than I was when I was 18 having a child, you know, 21 trying to raise a child. It's completely different because I'm able to, I'm able to give her what she needs and what she wants. I'm able to work on myself, separate myself and, and spend that needed time on my daughter to help her. Um, but yeah, this, this whole, thought that I had this morning was about, you know, my inner child, because it, it came to me again, y'all this morning, my, my beautiful, beautiful inner child, Wendy. Oh my God, you all just do not know. And it made me think today. I thought about all the things like that. I remember from my childhood, I just sat and I went into a trance, everything that I remember from when I grew up in Westgate from when I, and I'm talking about from when I was under the age of like five, when I was living with my mom. Now, imagine up to age five those are the years that shape you the most so I'm like what did I see what did I hear what did I feel what did I experience 
how did these experiences shape the cells in my body? Seriously, how did they transform me? What do I need to go back and look at and reassess to that, that is showing up in my present day that's stemming from something from my childhood? Like this is such a deep and profound question to ask yourself and to face because a lot of us didn't have very good childhoods at all. Bad things may have happened to us in our childhood. We may have seen bad things happen to our parents or other people in our childhood. You know, we could have dealt with sickness in our childhood, watched people deal with sickness, like a number of things. So going back and trying to revisit these experiences to understand why you are the way that you are now, it's not gonna be easy. It's not easy, it's challenging, it's scary, you know? But I am definitely up for the challenge um, because I feel it now. I feel such a, a calling to to love on little Wendy. Look at her, y'all. Look at little Wendy. Now imagine the life little Wendy dealt with as a young child with a mentally ill parent. Um, probably, I don't know if my dad was mentally ill, but I, th I think I heard he was on drugs. I don't, I don't know my dad. We moved from him when I was five, but I lived in Detroit, Michigan with them. And there's so many little things that I remember. And one of the things I remember, and th this is when I, I lived in Westgate, y'all. This is the last story and then I'll end it here. But, um, hold on, Ava's crying. I remember when I was in elementary school and we lived in Westgate. It's a project in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I remember getting up, y'all, early in the morning by myself, going to my neighbor's house. And I think it was like in another court because we lived in a project, so they, they had different courts. Going to their house and knocking on the door so I can ride to school or catch the bus to school with that, that child or the mom or whatever. I remember doing it by ourselves as kids. And I remember this one time distinctively that the mom opened the curtain and she seen me and she said, Wendy, go back home, honey. It's too early. Come back later. I got myself up. Mind you, I was in kindergarten, y'all. Walked to the neighbor's house because I knew I had to go to school. Do you understand that? I remember this vividly. I did it multiple times. Imagine that. I don't, who knows what time I was waking up, but I know it was dark. I'm in a project in the hood, a kid waking up early, like by myself. <laughs> that shit is so crazy to me. I remember that to a T. I remember also getting on the school bus by myself, not the school bus, the Pat bus by myself to take me to the elementary school. I think it was like Thaddy at Stevens or something like that. Like, I remember that. Isn't that crazy? And this is when I had lived with my mom. I remember another time waking up, y'all, and it was like Christmas. And I remember we didn't have a Christmas tree. I don't remember anything like that. I remember getting a toy. The toy came from the Salvation Army. I remember that. I remember it was one toy. I opened it up. It was a white Barbie with a, a scooter. Man, y'all could have told me that I got some gold. I love that toy so much. But I remember only getting one toy. That's it. And and I know what, what it's become nowadays with Christmas and things like that. We just overdo it for our kids. We try and give them everything we never had as a kid and all that. And how it's just a whole ploy to get more money from us. You know, I get it. I get it. I understand all that. You know, kids don't need a whole bunch of toys. But I remember that distinctively. Just being so poor that we didn't have a lot of, a lot of things. Um, I got that one toy that was donated from the Salvation Army. Um, but I'm going to end the video here. We're coming up on 15 minutes, but I, I, that was just on my heart today, on my mind, especially in my power morning today, because it made me think, what happened to me when I was younger? What did I see? What did I experience that I might not necessarily remember now outside of the things that I remember now? What happened to me? You know, that, sh that shaped me into who I am now. I love that I'm on this this enlightening journey. I'm on. I'm love that I'm on this self discovery um, journey journey and my journey of personal and professional growth and development because it is ch changing how I look at the world, how I feel, how I behave, how I show up, how I interact with people. It is just an amazing journey, and I, I encourage everybody to take the plunge and to do it. Um, strive to be the best 
version of yourself, y'all. Understand yourself, research yourself, learn, grow, figure out why you do the things that you do. Understand why you do the things that you do and take the steps to change the negative behaviors and thinking and things like that. So you can be the best possible version of yourself, the highest possible version of yourself. So you can share that with the world and you can have and be and do whatever you want and live the life that you always dreamed of. Um, all right, y'all. I'm going to end it here. Do something positive for your mind, your body, your soul, and of course, for someone else. Y'all take care.